Hello. So we were talking about the uh, three uh, communication protocol and addressing. Oh, sorry, add two addressing and one of protocols that we need. Uh, we were talking about the ARP and MAC address and IP address. Let's try to see in the real world. So we have a normal like two router, router one or router two, and we are going to connect router two and router one through their fast zero slash zero to. Uh, to zero slash zero and let me start the lab I'm trying to show you like we, we are going to put like a normal you know internal IP address of 192 or 10 or 172 doesn't matter if you remember I said there's a range of IP addresses for the private IP addresses and this uh, what we pick from the private IP address we have to pick a range and put into our internal network and uh, if we trying to go to the internet there is what's called NAT after the inside internal network anyway uh, well let's assume this is not directly connected that's what I'm going to explain now is happen to any communication even if there is two devices connected on the other side of the world like if, you, if you're here and try to connect to a web server in China or Middle East or anywhere the same thing will happen over and over again let me just try to calculate my idle PC and as I said this is a GNS3 uh, we are trying to do a GNS3 tutorial on techpix.net again I'm waiting for my brother Ricky to do it so that will be make a lot of sense of what I'm doing now you know idle piece all that thing uh, you might see kind of weird what I'm doing but anyway I'll log into my server to my router here uh, R1 and let me see what interfaces I have so I have two interface let me uh, log into one of the interfaces, no shut down, and then IP address. Uh, I don't know, I hit the cap. I'll put 192.168.1.2 mask 255.255.255.0. Okay. Alright, so now you see that, you remember when I said the ARP table, the ARP table now we don't have entry, we have entry for all self only, so this MAC address, hardware address, if we do show interfaces, fastener 0.0, we can see that's actually our MAC address right here. So now the router is like, you know, I don't know anybody else, I know myself only, I know myself is 192 and my uh, MAC address is this, so I don't know anybody else, I'm sitting here alone, I don't have connectivity to anyone. Let's go to the other side and do the same thing. So conf t interface value zero slash zero, no shutdown, IP address one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one because that was two on the other side. That's zero. Let's see the R table on this side. See now is the same. He knows himself only. Show interface fastness zero slash zero, and as we see that he has his MAC address only in the R table. And if we go to R two, that is a different MAC address right here. See there's one, and there's zero. So it's different MAC address right here. Now it's just a normal two routers that connected through IP address. And what I'm going to do, I'm going actually to sniff the traffic, start capturing on here between uh, these two interfaces. All right. So I hit start capturing, and now I have to start Wireshark. All right. We should not see any traffic for now because we're not doing anything. We'll have. The Wireshark supposed to come up any minute. Supposed to come up any minute. A little bit taking a long time. I think my my CPU is still high because my idle PC wasn't have a start next to it. But that's the only uh, value I found. I should recalculate idle PC on DNS to make my CPU a little bit uh, lower. And let's confirm that. Let me see, here we go, it's starting now, but I was going to the task manager, I'll show you how the CPU is actually calculating, uh, I'm not sure if, I mean I lost, here we go, task manager, 
uh, still waiting for the task manager with the uh, now I'm starting my task manager I can see that's oh I'm like 100% utilized on uh, the CPU I will have to recalculate the idle PC anyway I'm just waiting for the uh, net protocol the Wireshark to open so so we can see the uh, good thing so anything what, what, what I did now like you saw me go in the interface and assign an IP address from the range 192 192 is a private IP address I can use it anywhere on my network and I show you that on the interface there wasn't already burned in an I in MAC address right here that I could I didn't assign I just assigned the IP address and by default the router is actually mapped his own the one that I assigned IP address to his own MAC address and uh, you don't have any other I uh, IP address like ARP entry and we still don't have any other ARP entry so now he don't know that he's connected to anyone so now we're actually start capturing data remind me later I don't want you so there is some kind of communication is going on between but that's actually not like you know ARP or something it just uh, I think it's like the keep alive between the just the interface to know its status is up up but anyway now I'll start a communication between two devices let me recalculate the idle PC so I don't have maybe a high CPU usage just so the record won't stop recording I guess wait for it now okay mm again wait for it all right so this should be better because will come with like the start next to it if we apply it we should be better now I just don't want to go to the task manager again because if I went to the task manager I'll lose the recording but kind of sure that's we're a lot better so now let's start let's start now a communication so I'll start pinging and if you guys don't know what the ping ping is uh, a protocol to test connectivity between two routers so we said this 192 16812 and this 192 16811 I'll ping the other side which is 192.168.1.1 look every time the first time you're trying to start the communication the ARP will, 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 will start looking for the MAC address that's when you lose one ping and then you'll start having the ping uh, in the right way and then the three hand way shake will start see now first ping is fold and now we have the full ping and now if we do show ARP Guess what? He starts seeing the other end, which is one one, and that's the MAC address of the other end. And sh show ARP, he can't see the other end. So what's happened now? And let's go to the here. That's what's happened. I'll go back again. All right. Do you see this here? Let me stop the. right so it started after all that just you know keep alive messages nothing but it started that the MAC address the source MAC address so you, you're not seeing any IP address here so we are here talking layer 2 the source MAC address of C001366 is broadcasting as I said the broadcasting is like you know somebody's yelling at like no we're saying who has the IP address. It actually says that's who has the IP address one one because I was trying pinging one one from one two and send it and now there's a reply came from you know says that's I am the one nine nine you know one nine one nine two one six eight one one uh is at and he gave me his Mac address and then he took this Mac address put his RP one and start sending now he moved the ARP uh, kind of the ARP is like you know the transformation between layer two and layer three after he got his MAC address, he starts sending the ICMP, which is the ping packet, because ping is an ICMP protocol. And you can say he's, it's protocol, now what was ARP and now ICMP. So it starts sending, you know, ICMP, he says, request, reply, if you can't, we send four, uh, or one, two, three, four, five packets, and we have request and reply for the five packets successfully. Okay, so that's in a brief what's happening with the ARP and MAC and uh, IP address. 
added to that when you're transforming like any kind of data between uh, two hosts you have to uh, get to the three-way handshake the three-way handshake is when you're sending an acknowledgement and uh, a request an acknowledgement and acknowledgement back from the server or from the destination please go like on YouTube as I said or maybe on a uh, wiki and try to find what's the information I, I mean it's easy I don't have to uh, explain it again and again I'll from now on on I'll focus on show with the packets and packet tracers and do more labs than just talk again and again about what is already available out there on YouTube and on the uh, network on the uh, like wiki or any other internet resources there's a lot of like, we're going to talk about a lot of protocol I'll just have to go in and show you the packets like for example we get to the switch like for spanning tree I don't have to explain the spanning tree again again I'll say it in a brief but then I'll come in the uh, packet share pa uh, sorry the Wireshark and show you the uh, packets that are sent and received for that protocol in a specific and by the way we could actually say like I need to see the ARP only and show you the ARP uh, packet sent and received so the ARP is easy just two packets that says hey who has this uh, IP address the MAC address of play now I has the I the uh, IP address and if you want to see your pink packet you just have to go and you want to ICMP I'll show you the ICMP started 1.2 and even in real time let me like from now I'll, I'll I'll do it on the other way I'll ping from 11 to 12 192.168.1.1 see now in the back oh so I, st I stopped the I have to capture again I st uh continue that saving okay you're reading what the hell why you're, you're reading all right let me go back to the capture again star wire shark should be start the capture because the capture was already in i need the icmp only already have four packets that's from our old let me uh, Ping again. Uh, uh, that was R yeah, R one. I'm trying to ping one one. So you see in the back is already like real time captured all the traffic that's sent and received from you know uh, R one. You mentioned that the ARP is not happening anymore. The ARP is happening one time only. The ARP is just one time when he has his, the information is ARP table. You don't have to go back again and do the ARP. So ARP is just one one thing that has happened one thing only. It just sent. Our packet get our pie store that our packet in his ARP table and that's what the ARP table you know you just have to, to show ARP table and that's could get so ugly because like if you have a switch and that switch has you know I'll say maybe 96 port if it's chassis or some kind of uh, stockable switch uh, there the ARP entry could be like very big it's not just 96 port some of the ports can be connected to a switch so just to do a filter you can do show ARP in and give the IP address and we'll give you the result right here that is very important uh, command you have to, kn to know it because you are going to be trying to locate where's some of the host located if you're in production environment for example you have somebody's trying to find out where he is connected to to what port so you have to find his ARP entry first like you know that's the MAC address his MAC address and then from the MAC address but I think the MAC address table is oh yeah that's because you know so my fault oh yeah the MAC address table well I'm not showing here anything because we are not layer 2 or layer 3 but on the switch you just have to do the show mac address table and then include you know that's mac address and it'll show you on what port is exactly connected to and this way you know uh, what ports are connected to. that's very important command you have to learn both of them and with the filter and include and by the way that's the uh, pipe the sign is to like filter more in the mac address table or in the routing table in the future i'll show you how to do it in the routing table all right, thank you very much. That was the second one for the uh, TCP IP connectivity with MAC address and ARP with the three-way handshake. I will see if I have something else before we cover, uh, we, before we go to the uh, switching, uh, uh, switching uh, technologies. I'll have to go to cisco.com and see again what I did miss, I didn't cover. I think I have a little bit covered kind of 
not in good details but in good information that's most of the uh, thing before the switching but as i said there's a lot of things i uh said during the videos that you guys have to go out and find it yourself because as I, as i said from the uh first uh, video that the way i'm going to put this training together is that i'm kind of you know new uh to the ccna and i don't have any training resource so i have to find them online there's a lot of people out there they don't have the ability to buy cbt nuggets or INE or any other uh, training provider out there so they can just it's available on the internet you just have to know how to put them together how to read for them together and that's what i'm doing here again thank you very much for watching uh, i am going to do the other one hopefully soon see you later thank you